St. Mary's College, and what a long day it has been. We started racing at uh, about 9.20. We got in almost uh, over 100 races in here, and the team champs, uh, the top teams in the country, battling it out uh, right here at St. Mary's College for the national championships. Uh, it was really quite a day. Uh, it was blustery and windy, and uh, we had all sorts of types of conditions. We have, of course, our experts. We've got John Pierce, uh, Becca Dellenbar, and, of course, Nick Ewens, and I always screw that up. It happens. Thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> everybody's here to tell us about the day. Uh, John, let's start with you. Uh, it was a pretty amazing day. Yeah, yeah. I think first things first, credit is due to the uh, the hosts here uh, at St. Mary's. Uh, Adam Werblo is, you know, kind of the head honcho around here, but his whole team of race committee officials, umpires, uh, and not to mention just the wind showing up today. They got through 102 races on the day, which is unbelievable. The racing was extremely high quality, um, so hats off to St. Mary's for putting together a top-notch event. It really was full on. They started on time, and people really appreciate that when the when the event is running uh, like clockwork. Of course, uh, Becca, you were out on the water for the better part of the day. Uh, tell us about that. It was blustery, it was windy. How, how did it affect the starts? Well, first of all, I'll echo uh, Pierce's uh, sentiments. The race committee and the umpire uh, being on the water all day, I saw sort of the really high quality that they brought to this event. Um, you know, really uh, quick to respond to these very shifty conditions and uh, sort of handle the, the racing from that end. Um, really well done, obviously. The number of races speaks to itself. Um, as for the conditions, you know, we had a lot of wind, but it was very shifty all day. That certainly played into, uh, I was mostly hanging out at the starting line. Um, so often, you know, you know, we'd see a big lefty, boats wouldn't get off the pin. Um, you know, boats would be over early, you know, it was too breezy. So that certainly played into uh, the, the start and the first beat a lot. It uh, must have been uh, exciting uh, to be out there and see these teams really battling it out. Definitely uh, marathon day out there for these 16 teams. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of time off the water, so um, it was really impressive to see. You know, sort of from 9:20 this morning, like you said, to uh, what is it, 5:30 when we got off the water. Um, teams really had high intensity the whole time. Um, everyone is, was bringing it, even till uh, you know the last races out there of the day. Uh, of course, Nick. I know uh, team racing is near and dear to your heart, and. Uh, you know, on a big day like today where you're just powering through the races, how do the teams uh, keep up the intensity and uh, the communication? Well, I think at a national championship, you know, they're going to have the intensity. They don't have to really work on that. It's probably more about uh, more about keeping their keeping that in check and uh, you know, in staying present in the in the moment and not getting too too ahead of yourself. Um, you know, we saw really good teams take consecutive uh, losses. And we saw really good teams um, getting scared deep into races um, by some of the teams that they probably thought that they were going to walk all over. Uh, some of that has to do with the national championship and everybody, you know, bringing up their game. But I think a lot of it has to do with the, the conditions we had with, um, you know, sometimes at the windward marks it might have been blowing four or five knots, uh, really lightened up oftentimes up top there. But then at, at Leward Marks, it, they, everybody could be pretty well lit up and, uh, you know, 12 knots and above. Sometimes people were overpowered. So it had to be good in all the different conditions and, um, you know, and be able to change gears and, um, you know, and battle through the conditions. Of course, if you're just tuning in, we're at the uh, Laser Performance Post Game Wrap Up Show here, day one at the 2014 national college team championships it was really a marathon day and of course uh if you had been tuning in you noticed that we were talking a lot about michigan uh <laughs> they were really the team that uh i think surprised all of us they were great today yeah nick and i you know uh talked about them a little bit this morning but i don't think we really knew what we were looking at and um you know they almost had two additional wins um right now they have a record of four and nine but if they were uh six and seven they'd be right in the battle for actually making it to the top eight they almost beat charleston um in a real tight race wisconsin's also right there with them uh they're tied right now actually for 11th and 12th place so uh those two teams they're probably not going to make the top eight round but i'm sure they would love to beat each other in the overall standings you know coming out of here so a little conference rivalry going on did a lot of training together leading up to yeah, the event that. and so uh you know 
which I think is why they're why they're bringing it, why they're beating you know good solid teams that go to a lot of team races like ODU, um, you know, the Santa Barbara team we've talked about and how they're you know full of talent, yeah. maybe raw talent, but um, you know I think the training that Wisco and Michigan did probably is. So, um, yeah. MCSA, shout out, MCSA, nice job. It uh, doesn't matter if the lakes are frozen, polar vortex, <laughs> you guys don't care. And, of course, uh, Becca, from the water, uh, was there a team that caught you by surprise that uh, you maybe didn't think was going to press at times like they did? I don't know. I think it was, um, especially with these really shifty conditions, you saw certain teams sort of surprising you at the start across the board. Um, you know, you'd see teams that are currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard, Yale, St. Mary's, Navy, um, you know, over early and having, you know, spinning at the start um, while, you know, some of the teams at the bottom are uh, coming off the line a little better. So, you know, we're seeing, I don't know, some uh, definitely some mix-ups on the starts, which was which is fun to watch with this shifty conditions. Of course, uh, we're not quite through the first uh, round yet, but uh, we have a top eight at the end of today. Uh, let's just run through who they are and uh, how we think they got there, got here. Why don't we start with you, John? All righty. So um, why don't we start maybe at the bottom and work sure. our way up? Number eight. All right. So um, we're going to have to start at number nine, actually, because basically go. at number nine, we have Stanford uh, with an eight and five record. And uh, below them, it goes all the way down to a five and nine record. So there's a big break after nine teams. So those are clearly the top nine are, are better than the bottom six or seven. So um, Stanford is eight and five. They're sitting outside of qualification for the Elite Eight. So they have a lot of work to do tomorrow. One race ahead of them. Well, uh, hold on. Hold before on. Before we move on. Hold on. Just talk, let's talk also about who they, what races they have remaining left. So they're, they might be in ninth right now with a tie in front of them at seventh. Um, but Stanford might, might be sitting in somewhat pole position, even though they're outside of it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't want don't to pass judgment on races that haven't been sailed. But uh, you know, Stanford might have a better, uh, better opponents to face here late in the round. ODU and Michigan are the only teams they have left. To, so assuming they they can win those races, they're going to be ten and five. So uh, I think if they win both those races, they have a pretty good shot of making it into the uh, Elite Eight because some of the teams in front of them have some real tough races coming up. You know, you uh, had talked about them early. They dropped two races right off the bat. I think they were one of the first boats out there, first yeah. teams on the water they today. some tough opponents right I away. wondered if, uh, if that had something to do with dropping the early races, maybe just having to be on the water so quick. Uh, but it really did maybe come back to hunt them a little bit. I think they just had a tough day getting, uh, you know, starting out. I think their first races were like uh, maybe against Yale and St. Mary's, who were the two top teams. Um, so losing those races, it's hard mentally, but in the long run, those are tough races that everybody is going to have a hard time winning. So I think Stanford should keep their chin up. Um, they have an army of talent here. They have like 25 people here and like 800 parents. So they have plenty of support. So they just got to keep their eye on the prize, I think, for tomorrow. We did see uh, a lot of the Stanford uh, parents out and around. Of course, they were commenting on the wildlife here on the shores of, <laughs> of uh, St. Mary's. Uh, so, and so, who do we have sitting in eighth place? So, in in eighth, in, with a tie, is Georgetown and Charleston. They're both uh, eight and four. Sorry, it's a three-way tie. Tufts, Charleston, and Georgetown all are eight and four records. And then nine and four in fifth is Roger Williams. So, all those teams have four losses. Uh, Stanford has five losses, so it's basically a tie across the board there, and we know for a fact that Charleston and Georgetown have some tough races tomorrow, so um, they also really should have the goal of trying to win out on tomorrow. I think any of those teams in that bracket of, of you know that tie, they need to come in, win all their races, and sail their way into the top eight. So big swing, uh, swing uh, race is going to be Charleston and Georgetown. Um, they still have a race to go, so that's going to swing things uh, dramatically. Uh, Charleston also has to face Yale and Wisco. Uh, Georgetown, meanwhile, has to face Charleston and uh, also has Tufts and Washington. So mm -hmm. um, about, about equal, but like I said, the fact that they match each other um, is, is going to you know, be a big deal And who gets into the grade eight. Of course, we, uh, we saw this happen at the women's champ. Uh, it was really bunched up in the middle of the fleet. Yeah. Uh, a couple of mistakes here can really cost you. You might go home early, where if, uh, good, consistent sailing can launch you into the finals. Absolutely, yeah. And then uh, just ahead of those teams with a 9-3 and three record, 
Uh, I'm sorry, no, nine and four is Roger Williams. Uh, nine and three, Boston College. So you're fourth, fifth team. And then we were uh, very surprised and, and happy to see the U.S. Naval Academy come out with a ten and three record today, sitting in third place. Very strong sailing by Navy. So uh, you know, credit to those guys for doing an awesome job today. Yeah, a little bit under the radar from us. Yeah, to be we fair. So. Yeah. Um, Maybe we just didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely keep our focus on them um, in the next couple races. They got. Uh, they have St. Mary's um, and Tufts, so um, definitely a couple tough races. A couple tough races for them. You guys really seem to be impressed with uh, Roger Williams today and the way they they would attack uh, downwind as well as upwind. Yeah, they're kind of fun just to commentate because they <laughs> they never just keep sailing. Like I was talking to uh, their assistant coach Colin Merrick after that race that we watched. And uh, their goal is just to convert their play at every opportunity, downwind at each mark rounding or upwind. And when we saw some teams slip up today, in my opinion, was when they kind of sailed for a while. Even though they had a play that needed to be converted, they would sail for a few minutes, get to the next mark, and then wait for it to happen. Um, and I like how Roger Williams is just going for it constantly. Kind of forcing the issue. Uh, what was that like on the water, Becca, when they would when they would do that. It must have been exciting and a lot of tight racing. Yeah, we didn't see so much of the the downwinds, um, so we were focused on the starts, but um, I think the same sort of mentality showed up often at the starts. Uh, the teams that were really aggressive coming you know, out of the gate from two minutes on, one minute 30 on, were um, you know, winning the starts and, and aggressive certainly seemed like it won the day. It's uh, definitely at the National College, college Championship. It's time to bring it and make it happen. Uh, now, of course, Boston College, uh, they're having a good regatta. Yeah, I talked to their coach, too, a little while ago, Greg uh, Wilkinson, and um, he seemed pleased with the day. And, and you guys who know Greg, he's sometimes uh, kind of hard to please. So uh, I think that's a good indication that their team is coming together nicely and, and meeting their coach's expectations. Um, and they kind of did some unconventional stuff on a few plays. Uh, we saw them push the Charleston Cougar uh, sailor who was in first all the way to the finish, force him to finish way ahead of the race, and then peel off, come back, and actually convert the play that was in the back of the fleet. That was a 2-3-6 that they converted into a 2-3-4 against Charleston. And the Charleston sailor that they forced to finish, you know, after you finish the race, you can't get back in the action. So he was just sitting there. He had to watch for like a full minute and a half as the race unfolded, and he was completely helpless. So it was a three-on-two situation. So Greg uh, thought that was unconventional, but he seemed pleased with it. Hey, why not if you can do it and yeah. uh, have have the presence of mind? Uh, that's what it takes here to be focused like that. Uh, so our top two teams. Top two teams are Yale and St. Mary's. I don't think any uh, surprises there from any of the us on the panel. Um, you know, St. Mary's as a local team, um, you know, they, they know these waters. Uh, the shiftiness of today doesn't throw them off too much um, and allows them to, to execute. Um, so a great day from them, solid. Um, and uh, and then Yale. Um, also, we didn't catch enough of Yale either. We we, we kept uh, we kept focusing on them uh, after kind of they were already rolling into a one-two. So clearly, um, you know, they it didn't sound, seem like they were in a lot of the one-four-five-two-three-six battles that we were seeing uh, and kind of were catching our attention. Instead, it seems like Yale was using their speed and um, and running away from the competition. Yeah, it looks like they only finished with one combination that was not a 1-2. Mm. So uh, no 1-3s on the board there for them, several 1-2-3s, um, and their only loss was a 3-4-6, so they lost to a 1-2 in that one. Um, so but interesting stuff. With uh, a race to sail against St. Mary, so tomorrow we're yeah. going to have the top two teams going at each other, and that's going to... That's going to uh, tell us who's going to be the leader going into the final eight. And, of course, St. Mary's uh, sailing strong today. It's their home uh, waters. Is, is, is that adding to it, or this, this, this team is ready, fit, ready to rumble wherever they go? They've gotten second the last two years, so clearly they are belong in the top. Um, and so I think, I think it's great that they're at their home waters. I'm sure they're having fun, but I don't think that's necessary for them to succeed. Um, Certainly probably keeps them... Um, for, for a lot of teams, anyway, that should keep you calm, staying in your own place, you know, in a familiar area. Um, you know, maybe you have more opportunity to get away from your teammates right now. That could be. <laughs> yeah, that is a good thing. Definitely. <laughs>
Um, so, uh, you know, I think they're in a, they're happy for where they're they stand right now. And of course, uh, we 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 don't have all that many races tomorrow, and and a lot to be decided. We've got the bubble. Uh, we got teams vying to get into the top eight, and we've got some teams that probably just want to solidify where they are and kind of hold tight and sail strong. That everybody who makes the top eight is going to be pretty happy about it because um, they can then sail from there, do the the next round robin, the Gold Fleet uh, round of eight, and then a round of four after that. So if you can make it through to the final four, I think you're still going to have a shot at winning the whole thing. I don't yeah. see a, a breakaway team. Maybe Yale, maybe they could break away if they can just make it through with just one loss until that final four. They might be untouchable, but I think it's uh, probably going to come down to that last final four round. Yeah. I'd, say the, Monday. I'd say the final, if you get into the final eight, uh, no matter what your record is going into it, yeah. I'm not going to say you have a chance to win, but you right. definitely have a chance to come away with a, um, you know, getting on the podium. Absolutely. And of course, a uh, perfect day of racing here at Conditioned Sun all day. Uh, Tomorrow might be slightly a different story. The winds uh, may shift and uh, be a little less. Yeah, we were, like, truly lucky today. Absolutely. Spoiled. Tomorrow is going to be a slower pace. I think it's supposed to be an east wind at about 5 miles an hour. But as Nick pointed out, local knowledge, Nick over here, um, there might be a sea breeze. It's supposed to be a warm day. We could get a southerly, um, and that would be awesome. That could uh, pipe in in the afternoon. Either way, it's, you know, it's not going to be... Uh easy you know no yeah. matter what you're going to have to be mentally fit to get through tomorrow um no matter if it was super windy super light long delays everybody's got to work through that and it certainly makes everyone glad we got in over 100 races today absolutely even that, though it felt pretty long that was a big push right get it get them almost to that point and then make them sh wake up tomorrow and get it done again yep hate to hate to get through the round robin too quick because really it's you want to see the consistency of teams over <coughs> excuse me, a period of time in all different conditions. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, those bottom eight teams, you don't want to send them home after just one day of racing. So I'm glad we have another day tomorrow, and especially with little battles going on, like the thing between Michigan and Wisconsin, you want to give those the excitement of that. Uh, it's fair due, you know, we should make sure that we're commentating on that tomorrow as well. For sure, and uh, as we move into day two at the 2014 uh, APS, National College Team Sailing Championships. Of course, you can follow it right here. Uh, you can at, at livestream.com, at collegesailing.org. Click on the live stream there at the championship link for this event. We encourage you all to download the live stream app so you can watch it on your mobile phone and your mobile device uh, and spread the word. Of course, we're peeking out at quite a number of viewers today. We're getting some good responses. We had some great questions. Uh, what do you think the top question of the day was? I think the uh, the one from Sammy Stokes about the mascot who who would battle uh, battle uh, he's best. A, he's a cougar, right? Yeah, he's a he's a, he's a Charleston cougar. I think he was looking for that answer. Oh, you know, okay. and I hope he wasn't disappointed that we didn't yeah. accommodate him. But there's a the lot of good ones here. You yeah. went with the midshipmen. We're, they have people and yeah. weapons. Yeah, exactly. But uh, cougars, I don't know. I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're glad that you're tuned in. We're glad that you're watching. And, uh, you know, of course, it is all about Championship Monday. Psyched. Fired up? Fired up. We're going to bring all sorts of new stuff for Championship Monday. This was just a teaser today. <laughs> the commentary is going to get completely off the rails, and it'll be funny. Uh, we understand there could be some costumes involved. and uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll see how the weekend goes. Uh, uh, Nick, maybe uh, you can uh, help us out with your uh, little horn there on your phone. You got that yeah, thing ready to rumble? I think so. Uh, okay, and it's a, been a lot of fun here at St. Mary's. It's a beautiful location. Uh, and, of course, everybody wants to know what you three uh, think about the final four. We're going to put you on the spot right here before we go out at the Laser Performance post game show. Uh, put it on the line. Stick your necks out there. Starting with you, Becca. Ladies first. Final oh, yeah, four. Final. There you go. The results help. Like, maybe they help. Actually, maybe they don't. Well, maybe you know. All right. Good. All right. I'm going to go with uh, Yale, St. Mary's, Navy, and Raj. Wow, okay. Strong. Strong. Uh, and uh, if you agree with that or you don't agree with that, we want we want you to know. Get on the Cover It Live. Uh, send a tweet, Facebook update, and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, Nick? What did I say earlier? Oh, my gosh. You, said, <laughs> you uh, can't go back. Oh, I, I want to know. Yale, St. Mary's, Boston College, and Raj. Yeah. That's what you said I'm going to stick that out. I'm going to stick Navy. with it. 
as strong as they're going. They have a, a couple tough races ahead of them, and then and then the gears are going to change once we're in uh, final eight time. It's uh, you know there's no break at all, and uh, nerves are going to get tested. Yeah. And I think I'm going to stick with my Yale. St. Mary's, BC, Roger, Dodger. Hammer time right nice. there. We're going to put the hammer down. I'm just going to st keep Nick's uh, results there, but just switch out uh, Boston College and Tufts. Sorry, BC, but I think the Jumbos are going to come with some crazy uh, Mystic Lake type stuff in the light air tomorrow, and, you know, they'll be tough to beat. Is that uh, because of your conversation with Ken earlier? Would you threaten to break your leg? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, Ken was just, uh, you know, stopping in. He's really the, the master commentator. We're just commentators in training. Yeah, well, maybe we can uh, get him on the mic tomorrow. That would be <coughs> a lot of fun. Uh, of course, I'm Dan Egan for John Pierce, uh, Becca Dellenbar, and Nick Uwinson. We, uh, we're we glad that you tuned in. And uh, don't go away. We'll be back with more action tomorrow bright and early.